Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. How are you today? Good. My name is uh, Larry Obrecht, and I'm the manager of the Old Dodge County Animal Shelter. Larry's going to butcher my name, so I said I'll so, introduce yeah. myself. I'm Jamie McEnroe, and I'm the director of the County Animal Control. So we're going to be doing a tag team today. Yeah. Come on in, and uh, there's some seating. Some for uh, one of the things uh, that I will begin with, and that is budgets. How, ma how many people are with governmental shelters? Not many. So then the majority are what, rescues? Yes. Dogs? Cats? Uh, a lot of cats. All right. Well, you know uh, better than I, perhaps, that uh, cats are a real problem. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that we are all aware uh, that money is always a problem. So uh, about three years ago, I solved uh, part of our budget problem. Uh, you know, we had to cut personnel, cut personnel, cut personnel. And so I cut myself. And, uh, uh, and I'm a part-time employee. Uh, running uh, an animal shelter uh, for 1.2 million cheap. So there are always different ways. Well, we don't want to use that old question about the cat, do we? So, uh, <laughs> not in this room, anyway. <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, well, we're, we're here to speak about uh, torpedoing uh, adoption. I'm, I'm sure that you all received the, uh, uh, the list that uh, the Pet Fund folks did. And if you uh, look at our shelter, uh, you will see that we are at a 50 to 6 percent save rate. And that I think we're number 87 on that list. So we have a ways to go. And uh, I'm here to learn. Uh, just like you guys are. But we think that we have some unique no, programs that will uh, pay some significant uh, dividends for us uh, uh, going into the future. So uh, with that, if we can operate this, very good. One of the things that we did uh, very early on, and your uh, many rescue people, and I'm sure you have some very nice creative names that relate to uh, no kill. The, uh, so we were Oakland County Animal Control, I'm sure you're here control. and uh, uh, those names uh, uh, go uh, back to the beginning of time, you know, to the beginning of time. So we chose to change our name in an attempt to change our image. And uh, so we convinced the powers to be uh, to allow us, we are called the Oakland County Animal Shelter, but we're broken into two divisions, one division being control, animal control, and the other division is the Oakland County uh, Pet Adoption Center. So uh, uh, that is a way to get out to the public an image change that we're not the old uh, bring them in and we'll put them down uh, sort of a shelter. And we heard a lot about that, I think, uh, this morning. Uh, we want to be known as a place uh, to come to our, uh, and adopt an animal. Uh, most significantly about that is, and, and we heard uh, the lady this morning talk about 500 volunteers well, that's a whole bunch of volunteers. I wish we had 500 volunteers, and that's certainly something that we'll work at. But that's a way to get the word out, and uh, through your volunteers, because everybody has a neighbor, the neighbor says, we're looking to adopt a cat, and uh, uh, they say, well, the place to go is go on over to the pet adoption center. Go on, go on over there. Uh, they have uh, lots of cats. Image change is very, very difficult. I'm sure we're all aware of that. For the benefit of our uh, employees, so that we're all on the same path and we're all going in the same direction, 
uh, we developed a mission statement uh, where none existed. <laughs> and uh, our mission is to provide a temporary safe haven uh, for animals until we can find them a permanent home. And if everybody in your organization is on that path uh, to, to ensure that we're providing temporary homes and so we can appropriately place an animal in a permanent home. Uh, that goes a long way uh, to getting the word out and uh, being successful with uh, more adoption. One of the things, uh, our shelter was pretty stuck. And uh, we weren't, uh, I heard somebody this morning talk about being set way back in the woods. Well, sometimes perhaps there's an advantage to that uh, because uh, you have a beautiful setting. Our shelter uh, was combined, is combined, on a campus uh, with a jail and a uh, trustee camp, a uh, work release camp, and uh, so we look like a jail. You know, uh, there are fence with uh, razor wire on top and a big uh, tower. Uh, with a machine gun guy or something. <laughs> 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 that was really for the prisoner and not what we did to the animal. But it was confusing for a lot of people. So, uh, so we did a lot of planting. A lot of planting of uh, flowers. And uh, we dressed up the outside uh, to attempt to uh, identify ourselves as a friendly uh, welcome place to visit. <coughs> we built cows. Uh, you can see our gazebo. Maybe you can. This is a pretty small picture. Uh, we have a gazebo and we developed a uh, one acre uh, bark park. And you see back in that bark park uh, a lot of tents. Uh, we run uh, some events. We invite in rescues. And uh, we have the rescue set up tents. We also have vendors come in, uh, some significant, such as uh, Costco. And, uh, and we run a day of adoptions. For your shelter people, that's a big day for us. Because uh, the, red, well, they talked about an 11 page uh, application to adopt an animal. And uh, our, our position is that. <clears throat> almost almost all homes are better than what we have to offer in our shelter. So so we're we're not real strict. There are some obvious folks that we would choose not to adopt. But it's pretty easy to adopt an animal. So on this day when we invite all the rescues in, uh, dog and cat, uh, some they don't do on-site adoption. So it's a real big day for us. We, uh, we've adopted out as many as 27 dogs just in that one day because people go down and they uh, see the Labrador rescue. They, they, they see a beautiful dog, but they realize they can't get the dog for a period of time, <coughs> it might be. And uh, they walk through the shelter and lo and behold, we have the same dog. So uh, that works really well for us. We dressed up the inside a little bit uh, to welcome people. We were pretty uh, pretty stark, you know, with uh, just a plain, uh, plain counter and uh, some pretty rough uh, flooring. You'll see, as a matter of fact, as I go through some of the slides, uh, you'll see uh, some of our flooring problems. We have uh, prisoners, and I'll get into that, that come in and do our maintenance and our cleaning. Uh, so I have, uh, we have 1,800 prisoners in Oakland County. So we have quite a selection. You know, uh, if I have a plumbing problem, you know, I can call over and say, gee, is there a plumber in jail? <laughs> uh, so uh, in this situation, I said, are there any guys that uh, can, can paint murals, you know? And uh, lo and behold, we got two guys. Uh, 
And these, these are, unfortunately, these pictures are pretty small, but these are full blown, about 10 foot wide uh, murals on the wall. And uh, we ran these uh, off on the computer, just got an uh, 8 by 11 and a half uh, copy of these. They taped them up on the wall, they drew these, and then they painted them. So uh, we were very fortunate. And the idea is to make our place kid friendly. You know, kids come in, and sometimes if they're youngsters, it can be pretty distressful. A lot of barking dogs in cages, you know, cats in, uh, in uh, cages. And it can be difficult for young children. So what we wanted to do uh, was uh, uh, improve uh, the, the, the facility so at least we could uh, perhaps soften that a little bit. We have uh, Kitty City, which is a uh, free roaming cat area uh, where we have uh, cats. Uh, people can go in that room uh, and uh, sit down on some benches. And there's uh, always a half a dozen to eight cats in there, which are obviously compatible. Uh, and it helps us, especially for folks, come in and perhaps have uh, space and the desire to adopt two cats. Uh, they're, they're all, you know, they don't have a problem uh, putting, uh, uh, taking the cats home and, and uh, uh, putting them together. Uh, you just, <laughs> When we did this, it appears that we only have one employee. It's not true. <laughs> uh, you know, you can't stress enough, and rescues as well, that uh, a friendly and courteous staff. Uh, I've been there going into seven years, and uh, I come from retail. I was a tire salesman, and uh, there's no negative sale like a tire sale. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're trying to tell people they need a set of tires for the $50,000 car, they become very angry, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and so a sales uh, technique uh, and, and prior, when you came into the shelter and you came up uh, to the desk, sometimes it was as if the staff thought that uh, maybe they were going to do you a favor by just saying, hi. Ah, how are you? And uh, so uh, we worked very hard uh, to change that part of our image so that uh, we, the word goes out uh, that we do answer questions and we are there to help and we will do the very best that we can. Uh, well, I talked about uh, using uh, the best volunteers in the world. And it's, a, it's a real advantage. Anybody that's worked with volunteers, God bless volunteers, knows that, you know, sometimes they had a rough night the night before, or it's raining, or it's cold, and people don't show up. And if you're dependent on, on uh, volunteers showing up for whatever the task is, uh, it, it makes it uh, very, very tough uh, to plan and find out uh, someday, some morning, you don't have anybody to help. So for our maintenance and our cleaning, we use volunteers that uh, are guaranteed to be there <laughs> every single day. And if for some reason they're unable to show up, uh, there's always another one uh, to uh, fill that spot. So this works really well. For the public shelters, uh, if, if uh, a relationship with the sheriff is certainly necessary uh, to get that kind of uh, support. Prior to the disaster with government uh, budgets, everybody's, uh, everyone's budgets, as a matter of fact, the sheriff used to put work teams together that would support 501s. So any of you rescues or all of you rescues that are 501 at one time, and it'll cycle back when things improve, uh, the sheriff allowed uh, legitimate 501s access uh, to this kind of help. Very important for us. A huge, huge budget savings. So important, right? 
Uh, we want to adopt out animals uh, if we're not responsive on the phone as well as in-house to the public, uh, then uh, we will have an empty shelter. Not empty of the animals that we're going to have that we bring in uh, that are going to be available, but empty of potential adopters. That word spreads fast. Think about a local restaurant you were thinking about going to, somebody said, oh, don't go there. The service is terrible. And the food ain't too good either. Well, we, we, we make that decision without necessarily even going and seeing for ourselves. So uh, being responsive, super, super important. Earlier they talked about hours. Uh, the, uh, uh, so our shelter was the shelter they talked about. What they say, you're open from yeah, 10 to 2 or something. Well, our shelter was open from uh, 10 until 4.45. I come from retail. I don't know where in the heck 4.45 comes from. But that was, they needed 15 minutes to, to uh, run the register and check out. And, uh, uh, so we changed the hours. Uh, we're open to 6.15. We would be open later, and we will be, uh, once we get through this tough budget period. Uh, the, uh, uh, we are open until uh, 5.15. How's that? Uh, I'm a, and then the big deal was Saturday. The shelter was never open on Saturday and Sunday. And, uh, and uh, you know, especially for a return owner, animal, uh, and... Uh, uh, and adoptions so people can take their time and we can spend some time and the availability of volunteers uh, who work in our kennel and help people with adoptions Saturday is a really big day for us. So, so hours are really important there he is again <laughs> this is Steve uh, Steve's worked uh, for the county for about 25 years he came from uh, the medical care center and uh, he's been at the animal shelter for about 15 years inside and this year Steve is going outside. He's going to be an animal control officer, he's going to spend a little time on the road. Very friendly, very good guy. The um, prior, some of our people have a choice to wear a uniform such as an ACO. So when people came up to the counter, if uh, that individual uh, was going to work with them, they looked like a policeman, you know. And so, um, so we made a change and we went to golf shirts and sweatshirts and things with our logo on it. So our folks are easily identified, uh, 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 but uh, and they're all different colors, so everybody's not all in gray the same day. They can choose their own colors, uh, but uh, uh, they uh, look a heck of a lot better. And it's a real morale booster for our people. Uh, they, they enjoy not looking like a police officer if they're not. Uh, well, I have certain rules. So one rule they talked about is uh, nothing leaves our shelter unless it's been spayed and neutered. The obvious exception to that is a stray animal <coughs> that we held for less than four days. The fifth day it becomes the property of the county. Uh, so for four days, if the owner comes in and uh, um, identifies and recovers an animal they lost, dog or cat, uh, we would give, and that animal was not fixed, we would offer to fix the animal. We would offer to alter the animal. And in most cases, we offer to make an adjustment. Our board is $28 a day. Uh, so if you add that to a, a pickup fee, and maybe a rabies, and a license if uh, it's necessary, then uh, we would uh, make an adjustment so their cost was the same. So basically they get their animal spayed or neutered for free. Uh, that, uh, you know, 
I'd say probably 25% uh, of the people uh, make that choice. And so we're successful with that. But anything that becomes our property, anything that we have that we're gonna adopt out is, is uh, altered and up to date, obviously, on, on all of their shots. All of, all of you cat rescue people know what a scourge uh, upper respiratory is, URI. They talked a little about that this morning. It's a, it's a tough situation in a, in a shelter setting. And uh, so we do the very best that we can with that. And if people take a cat home and the eyes start to run, you know, if, if they have an outbreak, the car ride home could easily do that. Um, uh, we cover that. You know, we, we, uh, we assist them for, for a period of time. Uh, every, anyone that comes in and adopts an animal, and I think this is probably standard fair with everyone, and that is that uh, they receive, obviously, all their adoption paperwork receipts and so on. Uh, we give them a CD and a book on, uh, on care, training, and behavioral <coughs> issues. Uh, we give them a complimentary veterinarian visit. Uh, and it's, uh, it's simply a sheet with uh, about 60 veterinarians within Oakland County that offer a free checkup. Uh, although uh, the animal is already all up to date on their shots and so on, those vets are looking obviously uh, to turn that individual into a customer and uh, that serves us well uh, because uh, the free visit uh, gets them started and allows for some follow-up. Um, then, you know, uh, pet toys, I have another sli slide, I'll talk a little bit about where those things come from. And uh, the local feed stores, uh, PetSmart, Pet Supplies Plus, uh, Independence, uh, supply us uh, with coupons so that uh, we can offer people coupons uh, on discounted uh, just about everything, but mostly uh, food. <laughs> this young man, okay, uh, we are uh, pretty much lady driven. Uh, we, we are about 75% ladies that uh, work in our shelter. And uh, this is a very, maybe you can't see him real good, but they tell me this is a very good looking young man. <laughs> and uh, and he is, uh, he's actually a police officer. So he works for us part time. And uh, I've offered him full-time employment several times. Uh, but uh, his other job is that uh, he's a police officer up on Mackinac Island for half of the year. Oh, yeah. so he said, you know, if it wasn't for all yeah. those Italian girls, <laughs> I, would, uh, I would certainly accept. So, uh, uh, and this is one of our shelter dogs. I guess every shelter has a mascot. Uh, this is a dog that has uh, some behavioral problems and he has some medical problems. So he'd be a fairly expensive keeper. Uh, so we choose to keep him. And uh, we have uh, in, my, in our administrative end, uh, Jeannie back there at the door will confirm this, that we have, uh, I guess about 11 now, uh, office cats. So, you come into my office, you know, up on top of a big uh, uh, bookcase, uh, one cat's up there all the time, they're in the chair over here, they're in the chairs at a conference table, and they free roam at our end. And those are cats generally with problems uh, that, um, that we just choose to keep in the house. So they're free roaming, so they're not locked in cages. Uh, we have obviously on-site vet care. Uh, so that's what this dog is as well. He's ours. 